Hello and welcome to another episode of BTEC. Today we're going to be talking about a project I've had going on for a few years now. I'm um, going pretty slow, especially uh, after having a uh, family start growing, um, but it's something I've been working on for a while and consistently, and enough people now have told me that they think it's an interesting project that I decided to, to start filming it um, and uh, going forward with that. So this is a 1974 uh, 260Z. Um, I've previously um, gone over it, um, excised out all of the uh, rusted parts, um, which were parts of the, the driver's side floor pan mainly, um, and uh, and welded in new floor pans, um, seam welded most of the chassis, um, put much of a roll cage in there, added a, a uh, spot for to have a contained fuel cell in the back, and we'll go over all of that. Um, We've upgraded suspension components, although these will change. But the main thing I want to focus on is I think the part that makes this build um, fun and, and unique, um, which is on building an all Nissan all wheel drive uh, setup for it. Um, so we have a number of parts for that. And let me uh, start introducing you to those parts. Um, so I have a few of these G35X transfer cases. Um, the G35X X transmission was an automatic. Um, I'm not using that transmission. Um, I don't find automatics pleasing to drive. Um, the car is, is being built for, for fun and is just a project to enjoy. So we have the, the famous CD009. Now, this is a junkyard transmission that I'm using um, kind of help to help template and as a spare parts, um, but I'm building it with a new CD00A, which was the, the last iteration of that. So here is the junkyard transmission, and I have taken that apart so that we can use the different pieces for, for sizing um, and everything else. Uh, down here, um, we have the, the face plate off of one of the transfer cases, again, using it as a, as a template to help build pieces of this. And then there is the, the CD00A um, sitting over there. It's a brand new transmission. Now, this is the part that I've been working on, but I'll start covering now. And in this part, you can see that I've machined a pattern of holes into here um, using my mill. And uh, this is an inch thick, probably way more than if necessary, but I'd rather overbuild it than underbuild it. Um, and these holes are 12 millimeter wide through half of it, and through the second half, um, they're, eight milli they're eight millimeter diameter. Um, and the purpose of that is so that we can mount the transfer case on the back here, and we can actually have dowels um, with uh, threaded rods that go all the way down into the transmission, um, and then go through dowels, which then mount here, um, so that a custom linking shaft can link the, the CD009 transmission um, to the transfer case and make sure everything stays stays nice and aligned. So this is the uh, the adapter plate that I'm making to do that. So it'll sit with the larger end down here so that the, all those dowels can, can mount. And then on top of it, we'll have the transfer case which will go on here. You can see that the holes for this have not been machined yet um, because I want to get the dowels in over here, get everything aligned, make sure this is, is perfectly centered, and then um, mark the, the holes for, for mounting this. And we'll have a, a nice adapter plate, and then we'll uh, be able to mount the transfer case um, back on this on, a, on one of these transmissions. So I think it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Now, the other, obviously... We need to, to do something about putting in a, a front differential. Um, this one has the uh, the R200 long nose in the rear uh, that I have uh, the OS Geekin um, limited slip in, and might do something similar to the front. If anyone's got any ideas, please let me know. And uh, we'll we'll mount that offset um, to the passenger side here. And the way we're going to get it in here is it wouldn't fit normally with the uh, 
the L series motor. Um, so I have a couple of different motors for this car that I was thinking about. Um, I have an L28, um, which is in great condition, which I actually drove around with this car um, with the, the dual S carburetors. It was, it was good fun. Um, but when I decided I wanted to, to build something new out of the car and I stripped it down, I decided that uh, I really wanted to, to build those all-wheel drive setups because I think it would be fun um, as, a, as a nice engineering challenge and project challenge. So uh, there's not enough room really with uh, the inline six. Uh, so what I decided to do is go for a VQ because the VQ, um, the VQ35DE is so short um, that I, I mean I may have to recess a little bit in the firewall, um, but the engine's only about uh, 20 inches front to back. So you can you can really fit a lot up here since this engine bay is so long. So we actually have a, a VQ that I've been stripping down. It's out of a Nissan Murano, I think. Um, I got it for a couple hundred bucks. And you can see how incredibly short these motors are. And this will mount directly up to the CTZ09, um, which is really great. Uh, well, we're still trying to figure out exactly what to do with this uh, with this motor build. Uh, most likely a turbo setup, but uh, again, if anyone's got any fun ideas to, to do with it, I'm more than happy to hear. Right now, I'm just stripping it down so I can get measurements off of it and kind of see what condition it's in. Um, just for fun, got a couple of motors over here. This was the L28 that came out of it. I really love this motor. Um, might put it back in at some point or, or put it in a different Z. And then uh, hiding back over here, um, well, you really can't see it well. Well, I have to lift up the, the drapes here. Let's see if anyone can see what this is. Oh, there we go. It's a 2JZ. I'm sitting back here. I have the, the head off of it. Um, I have all the pistons and the crank out of it. Um, and... Uh, it's all ready for, for a rebuild. Um, again, I have some ideas of what types of builds I want to do with that motor, um, but but nothing in mind right now. I um, was thinking about doing um, one of the old MGBs or MGCs with it. I uh, really like the the classic looking uh, late 60s, early 70s cars. So and anything like that, nice small car, real drive setup would be I think, really fun to play around with that motor. Um, again, these, this motor, I really liked it. It really sound, sounded great. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool motor. I can't wait to, to get back to playing with that thing again. But for this, just because we really need the packaging, I really wanted to keep it all all Nissan and something that was you know, true to the Z. Obviously, the VQ motor, uh, we're in the 350Zs. So I thought it would be really cool to, to use this motor with the all-wheel drive setup. And it, and it ends up working out. So with this motor in there, maybe slightly recessed into the firewall, we'll be able to hopefully fit that package in here. Now for the uh, the front here, um, I am going to be running um, parts from a early 2000s uh, Nissan Maxima for the front wheel drive. Um, so we're gonna be changing a few of these parts out here. And uh, it's gonna be interesting. Um, so I got a few parts to play around with that. We got uh, front suspension, um, some BC coilovers there for in front uh, for, the, for the Nissan Maxima. And uh, grab them up here. I have, uh, I have these knuckles for, or front hubs really, um, for, uh, that I've, uh, got from a junkyard from a Nissan Max. And you can see I've, I've painted them up and they're still taped in there. And I think between these, um, some custom shafts and making those coilovers fit, um, getting the steering to adapt to it and everything, I think uh, could work. Um, so I'm gonna use the, that's the a rebuilt stock 260Z steering rack. I do like the manual steering. Um, although we may have to use the electric assist system, which there's kits for this car, uh, just because having the extra resistance of the front wheel drive setup is gonna make that a real chore to turn at low speed. Well, that's this project for now. I think uh, next time we report back, um, we'll be putting the dowels in um, over on the transmission and uh, starting to get everything aligned to see how that looks. And then we'll have to go send off a shaft to get custom machined. And just to give you a feel for it, here is a, uh, a shaft out of the G35X. This is the, the correct spline pattern. Obviously, the 
everything else on it's wrong because it's out of a transmission itself. It's the main, the main output shaft for the G35X transmission. But the something like this that adapts from the output from here to the input of the transfer case is, is what we're going to be doing. So we'll, we'll get something like that made. Well, that's all the updates for now. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and until next time.